How to avoid a telescope disaster this Christmas. Hi folks, Tyler here with Astroworks. Believe it or not, the hardest part of getting started with this hobby is choosing your telescope. So come hang out and I'll be going over how to choose the right telescope for you and what you're wanting to use it for. Before we get started in this video or take a deeper dive, I would highly recommend getting into a local astronomy society. That way you can get hands-on experience and learn about the basics of astronomy and telescopes. And that way if you have any questions, there is someone there who could mentor you and help you with what you're trying to achieve, such as planetary viewing or deep sky viewing. Let's touch briefly on telescopes to try to avoid that will only cause you frustration right out of the box. Toy telescopes are okay for the moon, but anything beyond that would be a disappointment and make you want to pack it up or leave everything in the storage closet that are most li and they all most likely come with flimsy tripods and any type of movements will cause horrible wobble. Then there are fancy telescopes with a lot of electronics that can be really overwhelming if you're not sure how to operate it or what to do with it. But if you're gung-ho about going all in, I would suggest you join a society. That way you can get some help from someone to turn to instead of getting frustrated. In my opinion, a good set of binoculars is an extremely great start into the hobby. Along with a good book such as Turn Left at Orion, which is easily accessible on Amazon or any good bookstore. As far as a pair of binos, any 50 millimeter would be great, would be a great start into the hobby. But if you want to jump straight into the bigger sizes that are greater than 50 millimeters, I would highly suggest getting a tripod for the stability because once you start getting into the bigger binos, they can be harder to hold and you'll tire out a lot more quickly. Take it from experience. Now let's talk about telescopes and what astronomers will suggest when starting out. Everyone will preach Dobsonians, since they're easy to use and offer a lot for beginners. There are go-to versions and manual versions. The reasons that Dobbs are great is the fact that you use big mirrors. And if you have big mirrors that lets in more light, the more light that you can see will let you see more details of space. The acclimation time can also depend on the mirror size as well. Also, collimation is sometimes necessary, and the other benefit is the transportation can be easily done since they all, most all of them, have alt as boxes, which can be easily separated from the tube and from the box. They can range from 6 inches in diameter all the way up to 20 inches or bigger, depending on your budget. Refractors are next on the list of suggestions from astronomers. Refractors have either long or short focal lengths which can be great for anyone starting out with either planets or deep sky objects. I always recommend refractors due to their ease of use for anyone starting out in the hobby or someone who is more experienced. There are two types of refractors. There are doublets, which is just two pieces of glass, and they can cause what is called chromatic aberration. And that is where you see a blue or purple tinge around a very bright object that you're looking at. That's completely normal and there's really not much you can do about it visually. Then they have what is called triplets, which is three pieces of glass, and they're usually referred to as EDs, standing for extra low dispersion. They're more expensive and they can range from any sizes. They do make cheap refractors such as toys and sometimes they should be avoided unless you're on a budget. And again, if you're on a budget, then I would strongly suggest binoculars over a toy telescope. Newts or Newtonians are next, and they're kind of like the smaller versions of Dobbs. They have a wide field of view, so they can be excellent for imaging or viewing deep sky objects. Smaller apertures like 8 inches will make them fairly portable, and averaging around 30 inches in length. They also range from different types of sizes, and remember, the bigger the mirror, the more you'll be able to let in the details of space. Also, collimation is required with these telescopes as well. Next on the list is SCTs or Schmidt-Cassegrains. 
which they utilize folded optics to allow long focal lengths and compact telescope designs, and have multiple mirrors and great for planetary viewing and imaging the planets along with the moon. They are big and hefty, and unless you have a heavy-duty tripod, they can be cumbersome, so please be mindful of them. If you're buying secondhand, I would suggest from someone that is very reputable and has all the bits and pieces so you know exactly what you're getting. Nothing is more upsetting than buying a secondhand from someone who claims to have everything, but it may not be due to the fact that you won't know what is technically missing or if it's working or functional like it should be. Again, guys, I hope this helps you avoid a Christmas disaster this year in the astronomy hobby, and we get you pointed in the right direction to get you going, to get you looking up. And I hope you guys would like, share, and subscribe, and follow more exciting content right here on AstroWorks. Again, my name is Tyler, and I hope you have clear skies.